energy crisis and energy prices is in all discussions. So I feel it's a very timely topic. Um, I found this program on Master's Portal and uh, was right away I was uh, excited that this is a very unique approach to uh, studying energy policy. Um, so, like I said, I'm a big fan. I'm in my last semester now. I feel I've uh, learned a lot here and also I'm very optimistic that that program will enable me to find all, all sorts of jobs, be it in the private sector, be it in the governmental sector with NGOs. I think uh, all the doors are open. So um, if you're thinking about applying, I can only highly encourage you. And um, we're going to continue with uh, Nicolas. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna, yeah, please introduce your program. Yes, okay, like the program, uh, basically it's sociology and cultural sociology. Um, uh, sociology as the discipline as itself, like we have the master program and we are offering here at the faculty. And cultural sociology is like a um, kind of new program compared to sociology that is more intended towards developing interpretative skills uh, for analyzing cultural meanings. Um, we get a lot into hermeneutics and structuralism. Uh, those are like um, the main uh, base of our studies. We have professors that are kind of the, the first generation on cultural sociology. So uh, it's something that is really contemporary, something that is talking a lot about um, the phenomena that is going around in society. And like, I highly encourage you, like if you have an interested interest in society, um, for sure, this is the program for you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, then I guess I'm going to introduce my program. Uh, as from the name, uh, it also states that the program is about international relations and European politics, also quite relevant topic nowadays. The program is mainly divided into two parts, which I'm a very big fan of, because this is the way where you can choose the path that you're going to study you're obliged to study specific subjects that are core for both ways, for example, history, uh, but the main division is between international relations and European politics. So if you're more keen on international relations, you can choose various subjects as peacekeeping or more towards West, like subjects about Asian countries, or you can choose more about Europe, European politics, European political systems, European peacekeeping, European peace developing. So those are various uh, topics, the various two ways that you can go to, you can go towards, but the basically the program is one. So this is up to you which way you would like to go more. As well as this problem is very cool because it offers you a lot of opportunities afterwards because it is so broad, it covers a lot of different uh, job opportunities as NGOs, government, government, law. And this implies the very important things that we make, uh, that we study, sorry. For example, we study different policy making, we study policy formation, we study history and where all these policies are coming from and how they should be developed. Thus, it's very cool to understand that you can predict or you can basically take a look at prediction of the uh, political situation in the world. And this could prevent, this could be an early warning system and prevention. And this is, uh, and what policies should be implemented in order to uh, keep up with the modern world. So I would definitely highly encourage you to apply if you are into these areas and these spheres of knowledge. And maybe as a short follow-up question, what do you think you can do with, with your certificate in the end? Like what job opportunities are open to you? Surely, as I've mentioned, you can definitely go into the law sphere. You can go into the NGO. You can become a, you can go for policy making. You can go to for policy drafting. You can work in logistics. You can work in, uh, uh, you can work in, uh, so it's pretty much an, an open uh, the, the, field. The, 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 it's a very open field. Yeah, you can go towards diplomacy. Mm -hmm. You can go towards European organizations, European Commission. So it is very open world, depending on how you specify your program and where you lead to. Okay. Thanks very much. Then last but not least. Yeah. Are... Well, uh, the Public and Social Policy and Human Resources is a program that 
you will be learn many things like the public and social policy concepts. It's not only from the EU countries, but also you will be find a good um, data and knowledge about all around the world and what policies in the labor market they applied and the effectivity of them. Also, you will be familiar with the policies of the labor market, family policy, education policies. And um, it's very amazing because I believe if you know these policies, you will be aware about the human rights. The mm -hmm. first of all, you will be aware uh, about all the rights that we have in the labor market uh, or in the society. Well, actually, uh, if I wanted to mention uh, more about this program, I can say uh, the policy making process, it's the best part that I really like it because it's especially going to be a skill that after you will be graduated, you can say, I know a bit, not a bit, I know about how to making policy. Uh, and I can recommend uh, this program because uh, after you you graduating in this program you will be as an evaluator professional evaluator about the concrete issue in the society or in the labor market also we have some specific uh, courses in the uh, labor market which uh, about the gender perspective in general and also in the labor market it's with a specific view, what is the all the role of the um, respecting gender in the labor market. And it's really interesting for me because before that, I didn't aware about who am I in the labor market. And after that, I know, OK, I have lots of rights. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to finish for this program, I can say we have some courses in economics and um, globalization. So if, shall I continue with the opportunity or later? Like the job opportunity? Job opportunity. Oh, please go ahead. Okay, perfect. So uh, if I wanted to explain about the job opportunity after graduating, I can, I can confirm that um, not only you can find many good opportunities in the, the into, into the public sector, but also you will be find really nice opportunity into the governmental sectors because you know both about how to evaluate things in macro and micro level mm -hmm. and how to making policy in both levels. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you everyone for those uh, really interesting insights and uh, for you who are watching if you do have any questions on these programs like I said you can uh, post them in the chat box uh, because we are going to move on to talk about the faculty and uh, student life here but uh, at the end of uh, this live stream we will reserve some time for answering all your questions also don't hesitate to be uh, specific on the programs and we're happy to uh, help out. Um, so the the reason we are all sitting here is because we are all at the uh, Faculty of Social Sciences. Not, I'm not saying this because I have to, but I, I, I think this is a really good faculty which comes with a lot of advantages, not only the, the nice building itself, but also the, the open environment uh, among students, but also mm -hmm. with, uh, with teachers. Um, so maybe we can start off with um, what is your favorite thing about uh, the faculty? It might be mm -hmm. it might be a place, it might be a um, an interaction you had, whatever you want. Um, I have one. Um, I think one of my favorite places is the atrium. I think it's a space where people debate, people also gather in the general basis. And usually when there's like global issues or things going around, like the faculty itself tries to open itself uh, to different professors from all around the world to share their ideas. And because it's open and everyone from the faculty can go on, even from all the university, some outsiders as well, um, it's a place for conversation, a place for holding debates, for talking about further things that are going around in the political sphere, also like about plenty of different um, themes in general. 
So um, mainly like that central part in the faculty um, is a place not only for gathering, but also like getting more knowledge than the things that we get into the classrooms itself. I would totally, if I can, of I, course, would, I would totally follow up on that because it's not only, Atrium is not only a good place for gathering, mm -hmm. but it's also a very good place for, well, it goes to play for studying. And the university offers a lot of opportunity for studying a lot of different environments. It could be starting from the library of a faculty of social studies, the one we're in. Uh, it has a lot of couches, it has a lot of tables, it has a lot of desks, whatever you feel comfortable in studying, this is all offered for you. It has a lot of various literature, both online and offline. University offers an online library, which is extremely useful for writing papers and fil fulfilling assignments, as well as the university offers a lot of uh, places out of the faculty. There are different faculties and right in front of uh, FSS, there is a faculty, uh, all faculty of uh, medicine, and this faculty has a 24-7 library. So if you're feeling that you're more productive in the evening or even at night, uh, you can definitely come there and it is fully supported. It has computers. It has anything you need for a productive day. And every faculty has a specific library. And there are a lot of places to study around different faculties. Uh, well, for example, my favorite is on the third, we have a small open space and this uh outside of outside uh on the third floor so if you go out of the third floor there is a small uh, small outside yard. small yard yeah. if we call it this way small yard uh where you can definitely spend time studying and enjoying the sun that's mm -hmm. what i do for my exams well if i want to mention about uh, what exactly i really like about the faculty i can mention about the professors and the staffs, they are really, really kind and they're always really quick response. If you have any questions or any matters that you have to solve it really quickly, they are really uh, responsible. Uh, and also um, the faculty, it's very friendly. I really like it because it's not very, very, uh, hard to understand wh where you wanted to go. It's mm -hmm. very clear, every, very, every uh, things is really clear. Also, I can say I really like the building. It's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> and um, you will be find a really good friends and it has very international uh, mm -hmm. students yeah. here. I have something also to add. Um, every classroom is like, there's a lot of technology in every classroom. Um, in my personal case, maybe you had the same as well. We have sometimes like invited professors from other universities from the other side of the world. And it's like being one-on-one, -on -one. like there's like these little cameras where they can see every student and we can talk to that professor. So it's not only like just, uh, just a video call, but it's also like a, class that it's given in a further extent where you can have conversations with people from all around the world so it's a highly connected faculty with other universities other faculties and also in the private sector as well so it's a really great opportunity uh, yeah just to quickly add up to that uh, it's not only online uh, mm -hmm. conferences or online calls with professors there are a lot of incoming guests and incoming professors would actually visit and attend the university mm -hmm. and it's just such a pleasure to meet people that you are looking up to and university does provide an opportunity for that okay so to like sum this up a, a little bit uh, I feel the faculty does like ticks all the boxes you'd expect from a faculty, but sure. in like a in a like in a high standard that you can definitely you have facilities to study here. You have lots of events. The the events we just mentioned are just like a a short glimpse of what's actually going on here. We have lots of discussions. There are uh, events organized by the faculty itself, uh, such things as barbecue, but also we have the Model UN happen, which took place here a few weeks ago. Um, so there's really a focus on offering uh, like programs to, to learn, to socialize, to, to get input on whole new ideas mm -hmm. uh, besides your clear focus on only your program. And um, 
yeah, I heard, I heard this from a student from my time here. I can say that I appreciate that a lot. Um, and so the the faculty uh, or the faculty we talked about that uh, we can talk maybe dive a bit more into student life here, mm -hmm. which is of course also somewhat related uh, to faculty. I can maybe start off with one of my favorite parts of student life is uh, once or twice a semester, we have the, the big hockey games going on. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan. So we have uh, a hockey team from Mooney. They play in this big stadium. And then uh, later on, there is uh, some after party. And it's like a, a big get together from all Mooney uh, students. And um, yeah, that is definitely one of my favorite uh, events. But um, yeah, they're like, many events like these? Yes. Um, like, um, in, in my case, I, I really appreciate the barbecues. There are some dorms, uh, for example, Dinarska has a specific place for having bar barbecues. So sometimes little groups will start gathering around the barbecue and because one student attracts another, uh, you start gathering with people from all around the world and at the same time, time like with a lot of Czechs and Slovaks that um, mainly uh, is that intercultural uh, communication that gives all the um, student environment you know much more uh, relevant you know for life because you know it's getting like perspective from all around the world and it's not only gathering for parting but also sometimes there's interdisciplinary projects that start from those gatherings um, outside of the faculty and inside as well um somewhat sadly besides all this studying uh, besides all these events that we just described there's also of course studying going on and also uh, a lot of students uh, are wondering whether it's possible to to find a job here to find internships um so i want to i want to ask you about it is it what is your opinion is it possible to like balance working studying is it easy to find well, a job here or <laughs> it's not it's not really hard and easy question, but if I wanted to explain about this, uh, first of all, for my for myself, um, I focus to my study because first of all, I wanted to uh, study uh, in program in a really high quality. Then, uh, if I wanted to explain about the part time jobs, I can say Berno, it's a really nice and international. Spe spe especially international city, which will be fine, uh, really good part-time uh, jobs or internships, uh, which you can find in every uh, international companies. And it's not really hard. It's um, if you want, you can find and in a really environment, um, international environments, it's not really difficult. But if I wanted to explain more about the um, uh, jobs or about the, um, mm -hmm. I mean, events, focus no. on the jobs or events. No, the, the jobs. Thing. Yeah, that's, that's all about me. Okay. Yeah. So, then I think I'll also overtake a bit. Yeah, if, if it's you have possible. something to add, of course. Please. Surely I've done an internship here at the um, at one of international companies, uh, I was working with logistics and besides logistics, I was working with the taxation, um, taxation after Brexit and uh, taxation after Brexit because the company is American. It has a where uh, it has a company in here. It has a plant in here and it delivers to UK. So I was working with taxation. Uh, besides taxation, I was working with, I had an internship in uh, uh, policy making and especially policy making uh, in, the, in the teams. So in the teams responsible for policy making and learning how to do that. Uh, in here, you can find various types of, uh, various types of internships and you even get credits for that. Um, there is a division between international uh, internship and in Czech Republic and Slovakia internship. Because if you get an internship in, uh, for example, Czech Republic, you are able to uh, have credits without taking the semester off. Uh, whereas if you're going into an international, you most probably will have to, because you're living in another country, take a semester off. And 
how to find those internships? Well, there are a few ways to do that. You either, as Bahar mentioned, you have to go into the companies, international companies in Brno website or in Czech website, and they have various uh, internship and part-time jobs opportunities. Uh, but besides that, you can surely take uh, a peek into the list of internship that university has, which universities have already, which uh, internship, which internships have been done by students of these universities. And that will also provide you a picture of where you can find where to look and what to do. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Before we move on to answering your question, um, I think we should talk about housing since this is also one of the big topics. And uh, so basically there are these two uh, concepts. There is like either living in the dorm or finding mm -hmm. uh, a place yourself. And uh, as some of our dorm veterans and uh, Nicholas, well, is a well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing. Like uh, living in the dorm, of course, is like a really good experience. Uh, right now, uh, the spaces available in the dorm are getting like uh, shorter uh, with the time because there's like a lot of incoming students. But at the same time, like looking for apartments or rooms are a really good option because uh, a lot of people have the opportunity of uh, living with a Czech family, for example, or uh, gathering around between uh, multiple students and having like an apartment for themselves. So it's more like what's the type of lifestyle you want to leave if you want to afford for an apartment uh, for to rent an apartment with some people, or if you want to go to the dorm, there's plenty of dorms here. Uh, some of them are being renovated, so that's why like a lot of students decided to go better for an apartment for now. Uh, but for sure, like we have those both options here in Brno, and so yeah. then I can cover the uh, private housing real quick. Uh, also, the housing market in Brno, it's uh, competitive. It's mm -hmm. Not easy these days uh, to find a place to stay. Uh, prices are also going up. Um, so I think the strategy applies to most uh, medium or larger cities in Europe. You just need to send out application after application and, and hope that mm -hmm. eventually the place that you're looking for comes around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's with patience, but you will get it. That for sure. Exactly. It's and just on, a, on a last note, if you are uh, if you want to live in the dorm, uh, don't forget about the deadlines applying uh, for the dorms and uh, have an eye on that. Uh, but you should find all the information on, on the website. Um, so now we can uh, move on to your questions uh, that you've posted in the chat. Um, if we were to see them on the screen. If we can see that. Oh. There's no question at mm -hmm. the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. That's for no. international relations ah, yeah, European there. studies. Yeah. Yes. See, after we graduate as international relations and European studies, what are the jobs opportunities that are suitable for us? Thanks in advance. Um, do you want to like give a short? I can surely, remember, yeah, yeah, of... sure. As I've mentioned before, that's a very broad program, and it depends on what you um, personally choose to go more into, whether it's European politics or international relations. Because the diploma is recognized all around Europe, you can definitely apply for um, uh, NGOs and IGOs. Uh, for example, you can apply for European Commission. You can work with policies. You can apply for. Uh, European parli uh, Parliament and work with uh, economics and work with taxation. Or you can apply for international companies around Czech Republic as well. Uh, they don't have to be NGOs. You can be just international companies and you can work with logistics. You can work with taxation. You can work with uh, all the areas that you more deeply go into. You can also maybe choose another way. I'm talking more about myself now with this way. You can also choose another way of researching and you can maybe apply for a research job or even continue your studies to doctoral, which will uh, obviously lead you to becoming uh, more of a research, research literate, a research literate future. All right. Uh, 
I'm Wesley. Thank you for uh, your question. I hope we could answer it. Uh, then we'd move on to the next one. Uh, it's from Danita. Uh, the question is, uh, what is nostrification? I have my transcript already. Where do I go next? Can I go through that? Of course. Okay, sure. It depends what you're talking about nostrification, because not uh, if you're applying for a European university, and especially if you're applying on studying in English, it is a bit different rather than uh, if you were to apply to a Czech university, because we are studying in English. Uh, here, you can either get an apostyle on your diploma, and you can directly apply to the university without needing a certification here. But if you are planning on studying in Czech, that is a bit different story, and we are not covering it here. Mm -hmm. So you can check whether your whether Masaryk you can email the admission and check whether Masaryk University recognizes your diploma without apostyle, and if it does, then just send it in. All right. Thank you very much. Um, next question is coming in from. Not yet. Like it's important to say that this nostrification process is not for everybody. Uh, it depends from where you're coming. And because of international relations, some students have like to do different application process than others. So uh, my best advice would be um, send an email to the admin. Uh, Admission, <laughs> yeah, admissions yeah, admission, office. That's what I was and, trying, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure, they're going to resolve all your questions because each nationality has like different uh, specifics. So exactly. it's better to check on the website. where your certificate mm -hmm. is from, whether for it's sure. in English or not. So we can't really like answer that question Depends in like the, a yeah, general yeah, yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. it, Probably it's more a case to case. Uh, I was more studying of if you had a uh, if you had a diploma, the previous diploma in English. Okay, yeah. so we've got the next question coming in from Peter. Uh, how much is the single accommodation in the dormitory and are they available? Mm -hmm. Also, if I'm interested in a private accommodation outside of the university, mm -hmm. how cheap is it approximately? May so, I answer? I think, yeah, that's, <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can answer about like yeah. the dorms. Um, maybe making a rough, like I know it in Czech right now, but in, in Euros, it would be usually it's around uh, 200 euros a month, uh, the dorms. There's some of them that are uh, cheaper, some of them that are more expensive. It depends on the facilities you have. Um, and in the private accommodation, it goes around 200 to 300 uh, uh, euros uh, per month. For sure, there's other options that are much expensier. Sometimes people find things that are much cheaper, but I can tell you that if you have a, a like a budget around 300 euros, that for sure is going to cover the accommodation per month. Yeah, without giving you a, an exact number, I would change the word how cheap is it approximately to how expensive is it approximately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah. right now, yeah. I think uh, uh, Nicholas mentioned sharing a room. Oh, sharing. Sharing. Yeah, he, that's important to know that 200 yeah. to 300, he mentioned yeah. sharing the room. That's not how the apartment hall goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But because uh, an apartment will be like a whole apartment will be around 800 euros. Uh, so that's yeah, why it's a lot of people. possible to find cheap, to but find again, cheaper, we cannot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cannot yeah. Like, give you like one price. It might be like a wide range. You might find something for mm -hmm. 400, but you might end up paying 800. Like. Well, you can, uh, mm -hmm. sorry for interruption. Uh, if I wanted to explain more about the single rooms or double rooms in two uh, dormitories, uh, we have um, a Slatko uh, dormitory, which you will be find a single room and double rooms. Uh, the price it's some same, somehow about uh, 200, Euro, 200 euros yeah, uh, for uh, per month. And you will be find a single room and double room there. Uh, also, you will be find really nice rooms in Vinarska, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really nice place. You, uh, I mean, the facility of the Vinarska is really nice. You will be find a football court, gym, and some barbecue places. Uh, some libraries there. Uh, also. Um, you will you can find uh, share rooms as Nicolas mentioned mm -hmm. in the, this range of uh, costs, but um, it's totally depend on the lifestyles. But uh, maybe to to add to this, um, the university is also planning to have a separate uh, live stream on housing. There is no date specified yet, but. Uh, 
also the university knows that this is a big topic. Um, so they are going to provide you with more information on that. And um, the live stream is also already coming to an end slowly. Um, so if you still have a question, uh, now is still the time uh, to post it. Uh, but before we wrap it up, maybe a, a quick round. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite place in Bruno? Oh, well, uh, it's really difficult because I really love Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> what is this one place? <laughs> yeah, Bruno has lots of great uh, pubs, cafe, um, but I'm really a um, nature lover. Uh, and I can uh, recommend uh, to some places like Deschpilberg. It's a very, very beautiful place mm -hmm. for hiking. Mm -hmm. And it's very close to our faculty. I think five minutes by walk. Yeah. And uh, also in Berno has really, really unique scenery. Mm -hmm. And you can um, relax sitting there and mm -hmm. hiking. And I really recommend it. And I'm the fan of the nature in Brno. Absolutely true. I'll surely end up, uh, I will surely continue that topic because it's not only Brno, but Brno has so many beautiful places around it. It's not only in the city, it's our way, amazingly beautiful places, two hours away. This weekend we've been to another city. So, And the transportation system between those cities and within those places is very cool. And you can just get a, hop on a train and in an hour, in half an hour, be in an absolutely different place, which was built historically by different nations. So it looks totally different. No. But my favorite places would be nature is, of course, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But what I like doing in nature is training. So my favorite places would be connected to sport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in love with sports. So I really like hiking. There is Mariansky Udoli, which is near Brno. That's if you like nature and hiking, where you can go for a walk and enjoy it. I really like the amount of, and availability of sports centers and gyms around there. You can find gyms uh uh, in the university, you can find gyms around for very affordable prices. You can find any types of activities if you want. You can find yoga, pilates, any type of activities that you like and you enjoy. There are group sports like football, and there are like uh, there are various types of uh, sports that are not common for this place. There is hockey. There are hockey teams. They are uh, that's common. Why would I say that? I want to say American football, but never mind. <laughs> there are American football. Uh, there are American football teams, and you can definitely get what you like from that. All right, I can only agree with that. But before repeating this whole praise of Bruno, I'm gonna keep it short. My favorite place is Lushanki Stadium. If you come here, look it up, check it out. Um, you see what it's about. Um, what about you? Uh, Bruno has, um, like, it's a pretty active city. There's a lot of things to do, uh, usually concerts. I think it's one of the things that I enjoy the most, like mainly some of my favorite bands. Um, it was just, uh, you know, something out of nowhere that I've, I've seen that they're coming here to Bruno pretty often. And um, in the scenery of music, of art, of galleries and, and stuff like that, Brno is full of it, like just about museums and galleries, there's dozens of them. So uh, if you're bored in the room and you already finished your homework, for sure, there's plenty of things you can do during the weekend, even during the week. So it's pretty active. It's a pretty active city. All right. So. Well, as you can all see, we are four happy students. <laughs> we, we do not regret coming here. In fact, we are very happy that we did. Um, to Oh, there's actually one more question yeah. before we leave you. Mm -hmm. Very last uh, exam graduation. Right. I see it in information after we defend yeah. our thesis. Yeah, state exam, I believe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's... you're having that right I've, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've <laughs> done my bachelor yeah. state exams here, so I, uh, the procedure is quite similar. Not not totally into that, but it is. Here you get the thesis and you get your state exams. They are usually either the, for some programs they are the same day in the same day. For some programs, they are vary between, um, they are vary even in months. So that's uh, totally okay for that. Uh, you finish it with state exams. State exams usually consist of areas, either areas or questions from your program, uh, from what you've studied. The literature is usually provided, but sometimes you can definitely in, uh, uh, look for what you 
look around for the look around the internet and look around the library books, which I've mentioned. That's where I use them uh, for uh, extra information. But you definitely get questions. Um, depending on the program, the state exams are different. For example, this year in a month, I'll have my state exams and they are mainly uh, there are areas and there is a thesis defense. You defend your thesis in front of the committee and then those areas, the questions are chosen by the professors and applied to your applied to your thesis. So basically your state exams uh, are very interconnected with your thesis. I get there are variations from program to program. Surely... So if you do have a, a specific program in mind, then feel free to uh, reach Either out to us and uh, we can always answer your question. Um, there's a question about uh, the upcoming semester. Like it starts <clears throat> this, the 18th of September, but it's important to know that one week earlier, there's the orientation week. I highly encourage all of you to come sure. before the beginning of the studies because that orientation week is crucial. All the information you need to know about how the studies are held here, uh, you know, the little specifics uh, about how to use the the information system that is this software where we have like all our classes, calendars and so on. Uh, it's important to come one week earlier. So if you're already accepted and in the, in the process of application, it's good to know that if, if when, when the semester is going to start, you should come a bit earlier so you can have the opportunity to uh, well know how to be here in the faculty. Exactly. Um, so to is this I have another, another question. One? Okay, yeah. now they are coming in. <laughs> what about internships? Is there any opportunity in different but, departments? Mm. Ah, internships about internships in departments in the university, not what I talked about. Do you know? Or? It's I like think... about the Erasmus or no, 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 that's, exchanging? No, 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 that's internships in the university, in the faculties. But it's still uh, deport, uh, supported by the departments and if you are interested in doing an internship, you can reach out uh, to uh, departments and then you will get... Yeah, uh, you can check the availability. Maybe the departments will be looking for... Yeah. Um, the details. An and internship for the details, be, surely. Yeah. I'm not sure if now there are any uh, internships available exactly at university, but university provides a list of internships which were done by the students. Mm. So you can definitely take a look at there and you can reach out to any which would actually, uh, which would actually cover your degree uh, in any way, for example, the way mm -hmm. I did it. No. All right, then, like you see on the, scre uh, on the screen, the deadline for applying for next semester, it's uh, the end of April, uh, so it's in less than two weeks. Um, if you have any questions that we did not answer today, uh, you can always check the program's websites. There's uh, all or most of the information you need, you'll find it there. If However, there are still questions open. Feel free to contact us. You'll find yeah, our exactly. contacts mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm, Ambassador sure. uh, website. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope we could provide you with some useful information. So don't forget to send your application and then hopefully see you in person at the faculty here. We're here to help. All right. Yeah, still have time. Bye. We are bye waiting. Bye-bye. Have a good day.